Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for part two of the Q&A, so let's go ahead and get this started. All right, first question. What can we do to fix bicep pain from low bar squats? No other pains when doing it. Um, consider not low bar squatting. All right, that aside, uh, here's, here's the thing to think about. If you cannot resolve the bicep pain or shoulder pain or whatever it is you're doing with the low bar squat, uh, consider not low bar squatting or adjusting your low bar position. You may simply be going too far down your back, right? You may not be pulling down on the bar enough. This is this is some of the, the two biggest problems I see. Uh, people are not pulling down on the bar, and this is where we run into problems, a lot of problems when it's arm pain related in some way. Elbows, wrists, things like that. They're trying to squeeze the bar and they're getting under it. Almost like they're going to do a behind the neck push press or something, you know. Uh, the bar is there to keep, you, you have your hands on the bar to keep it from tipping. And that means you pull down on both sides. It shouldn't be supporting the weight. Now, if you get too low on a low bar, you might have to support it more and more in the arms. But... That could be the problem. You could be going too low down your back. Okay, it's not worth it if it's causing you these sort of pains. I high bar squat. You guys have seen me put up elite numbers high bar squatting. You do not have to low bar to have an elite squat. So I mean, I can't get that through a lot of people's heads. You know, if you're a big, strong man. Okay. with strong legs and a strong back you're going to still be able to squat 500 pounds with whatever bar position you choose to go with Okay, so you need a context there you don't have to low bar squat just to get a big number some people get a little more out of it I get it, you get 10 more pounds low bar all right, all right, fair enough. But are you breaking records? In other words, is your high bar squat right at a world or a national record and you just can't seem to get past it and you know that you can do 10 more pounds low bar? Then by all means. But otherwise, if it, if it is causing you pain that you can't resolve by adjusting your technique and against stuff like pulling down on the bar, not putting it as low, so on, then you don't have to low bar squat, just pointing that out. All right, next question. How would you design progressive overload on dips? Uh, you're not going to like my answer. I wouldn't. What do you mean design progressive overload? It's a secondary exercise. We program progression on our, on our primary movements. Okay, most people understand that. The dip is a body weight exercise. Okay, that you might add resistance to, but essentially you're always going to be doing high reps on it. It's not reasonable to do really low reps on a dip. I don't care that some people do it because you're asking my opinion as a coach. There is no benefit to doing really heavy weight with low reps on a weighted dip. I don't even think the way to dip, there's like some sport that's measuring it, but it's not a big enough sport to justify it, all right? No one cares what your weighted dip is. They're going to ask you what you bench, not what you weighted dip anyways. All right, the weighted dip is a hypertrophy exercise. You don't need to program progression on it. You're always going to do it second, all right? You're always going to do some bigger movement first, a bench press, an overhead press, something, something else, right? It's going to be a secondary exercise for building your pecs and triceps. And it's it's a damn good exercise for that. Okay, so before people say oh, you're saying the dip's not a good exercise. No, no, no. The dip is a great exercise. Yeah, I agree. The dip is not a good exercise. It's a great exercise. So let me get that out of the way. It's a hypertrophy movement for volume. If you don't progress on your dips at all, but you progress on the primary exercise and you do the same amount of dip volume and work afterwards that you've been doing, your total stimulus went up. 
saying it's not that big of a deal. If there's at least some general upward trend over time, great. If you can add some reps, great. If you are doing it weighted, I always tell people be cautious. Be cautious with weighted dips. Be very, very careful. So if you can add five pounds at all here or there and still keep it in the rep range, you won't Hey, great. But you don't need to program it. Just try to accumulate reps. And I'm almost going to say you probably don't even need to do them weighted until you reach a certain strength level. I'm going to say until you're, you're able to do five sets of something in the 15 to 20 range, on your dips with just body weight, I don't, I don't even think you need to worry about adding weight. It's a secondary exercise that we do to really help thicken us up. And again, I want to, want to remind people that is not me dismissing the dip. It's great at doing that. Okay. But it, it is more of, of a met- metabolic fatigue type exercise. It really is. It's just not an exercise you can safely load ultra heavy the same way you can say a bench press or a deadlift, in my opinion. All right, next question, last question of the week. What's your favorite style of training? 531 conjugate Bulgarian linear for enjoyment, not best results. Um, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I think this is a kind of a bad question, and here's why. I'm training to be a champion. Champions don't think like that. Our favorite is whatever we did today. Let me make that very, very clear. Jason, what's your favorite exercise? I don't know. Is it overhead press or deadlift day? If it's deadlift day, deadlift is my favorite exercise. If I'm squatting with a safety bar, which I absolutely loathe and hate on a deep level, that's my favorite exercise. So we come back over to the training. Hey, Jason, what's your favorite style of training for enjoyment? The one I'm doing now. You know what? And that way, hey, I don't need to answer which one I'm doing right now either because this Q&A might come up in the future. Whatever style of training I am doing right now is going to be my favorite because I will force it to be my favorite. I will convince myself that I love it. And by convincing ourselves that we love it, what happens? Our training is more enjoyable. So we come back over to best results. You know what's what's fun? Winning. You know what I enjoy? Winning. You know what I enjoy? Being better than other people at things. That brings me joy. I'm, I am a competitor by nature. It's, it's kind of part of my personality. I enjoy being better than other people. Makes me happy. Winning makes me happy. So best results does equal enjoyment, doesn't it? Depending upon how your personality is wired. And that's the thing when people ask things like this. You need to understand you're dealing with different personality types. My worldview is not going to be the same as yours. And that's okay. It doesn't have to be. That's okay. You are who you are and I am who I am. I will say, though, the worst out of the list I ever did Bulgarian. Good Lord, I will never, ever, ever do Bulgarian again. It was the most single, most psychologically taxing training system I have ever used. And it physically and psychologically beat me into the ground. So if you wanted that one, I can definitely say on the list is the least enjoyable. All right? The least enjoyable. All right, guys. But that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.